Okay, welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Mass Channel, and I'm now answering a question from the UK A level papers. This is um, from the GCE um, 9MA001, paper one, pure mathematics one, from October, October 2020. These are the Edexcel uh, UK papers, um, which are different from the international A level, but the syllabus is pretty much the same in, in, in most things. Um, and I'm choosing a question from these papers rather than from the IAL papers for this particular topic of proof because this is new in the syllabus, something new. And so there's no questions like this in the previous um, international A-level papers like the C34 or the C4 papers that you don't have these type of questions about proof by contradiction. Um, so this is why I've decided to take this question from the um, GCE. I don't normally answer these questions. I normally stick to what I'm teaching in school. Um, so, but the, because this is very much related to that, you might find that I take some questions from those papers just to, uh, you know, illustrate certain points. So in this question here, we got to prove by contradiction. Now, this is a new topic in the, in the syllabus that was introduced since um, the first paper, which was in 2020. It says, prove by contradiction that there are no positive integers p and q such that 4p squared minus q squared equals 25. All right, so in this particular question here, um, when, you, when you're proving by contradiction, you have to do the following. You have to assume, okay, that um, basically there are, there are, um, positive integers there are positive integers such that 4p squared minus q squared is equal to 25 all right so we'd be assuming the opposite so we're going to show, show that there is p is greater than zero and p is an element of the integers and q is greater than zero, and q is an element of the positive integers. You could say positive integers. Okay, so we're gonna um, we, we're gonna show. We have to basically show that when we assume this, this leads to what's called a contradiction. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna say, okay, four p squared minus q squared equals twenty five. Now, what I notice here is that I have a difference between two squares. So I can factorize this as 2p plus q and 2p minus q equals 25. Now, because p and q are integers, so 2p minus q, where did the 5 come from? 2p minus q equals 25. So because p and q are both integers, then what we can say is, we can say as p is an integer, Therefore, 2p plus q is also an integer, right? Because you're multiplying an integer by 2 and then adding another integer, that's going to be an integer. And similarly, as, as p and q are both integers, but sorry, that means this is an integer. Okay, and also, therefore, 2p minus q will also be an element of the integers because you're going to take p multiply it by 2 and then take away another integer from that so you're going to get an integer so you have an integer times an integer equals 25 all right so when you have two integers multiplied to give you 25 then you're going to get either you're going to have 2p plus q is equal to 25 and 2p minus q is equal to 1 Okay, it has to be this way around because you're adding something that's going to be bigger. This is obviously going to be bigger than that. All right, because you get a positive integer plus another positive, two times a positive integer plus another positive integer going to give you something bigger than two times that positive integer taking away another integer. So that's got to be true. Or alternatively, the only other way of getting 25 by multiplying two integers together, and we know these are two integers, is going to be when you've got 2p plus 5 equals, sorry, where does the 5 come? I keep writing 5. 2p plus q equals 5 or and 2p minus q also equals 5. Those are the only two ways that you're going to have an integer times an, a positive integer times a positive integer gives you 25. If um, all right so now so that means 
uh, well, actually for this one, positive integer times a positive integer equals 25. They don't actually have to be positive integers, actually, because um, what's going to happen is if you've got 2p minus q, that's possible to be negative if if q is bigger than p. So anyway, basically, when you have two integers multiplied to give you 25, these are the only two ways you can get it. All right, The only ways you can get two integers multiplied to give you 25 is if both of these are, are integers, and the only way, only integers it can be is 25 and 1 and 5 and 5. Okay? 5 and 5. So now, if we solve each of these simultaneously, let's take these two. If we solve them in, uh, simultaneously, if we add the two equations together, you'll get rid of the Q. So you have 4P is equal to, that's going to be 26. So P is equal to 26 divided by 4, which is equal to 6.5, which is not an integer. And you have uh, Q is equal to 25 minus 2P. So Q is going to be 25 minus 13, which is 12. So if this is the case, then you've got P equals 6.5 and Q equals 12. Now, this is a contradiction because we said that P is a positive integer. So therefore, we've got a contradiction which shows that our assumption is false. But we've got to prove it for this one as well. So if I, if I add these two equations together, I'm going to get 4P is equal to 10. So P is equal to 10 over 4, which is 2.5. And Q is equal to 25 minus 2P. So that's 25 minus 5, which is 20. Okay. So we've got here P is equal to 2.5 and Q is equal to 20. Again, this is not a, con this is not, um, this is a contradiction because we, we can see in both cases... In both cases, P is not an element of the positive integers. Okay, P is not an element, uh, um, um, part of the positive integers. Therefore, we can say we have a contradiction. A contradiction, which means, so therefore we can say that there, we can just, uh, there are no positive integers, P and Q, such that this is true. So there are, therefore we can say that there are no positive integers, P and Q, such that P squared, 4P squared minus Q squared, 4P squared minus Q squared equals 25 Okay, so that's what we've just proved here. So we've proved that there are no positive integers, P and Q, such that P squared minus Q squared equals 25. So here you have to have your assumption. You have to sh assume the opposite. So if they say that there are positive, that you've got to prove that there are no positive integers, P and Q, such that this is true, you say that there are positive integers, such that this is true. And then you show by algebraic manipulation that this leads to, to a contradiction. Now, normally we wouldn't say that either this equals 25 or that equals 25 when you're solving quadratic equations. We don't do that because there could be many different values, okay, for which two numbers multiplied give you 25. But here we're they're only restricted to the positive integers. So the only way, uh, you know, when you have two integers multiplied to give you 25, there are different options you can have, which is either 25 and 1 or 5 and 5. Okay, in this case, 25 and 1, there's no only one way of getting 25 and 1. I mean, this has to be the 25, this has to be 1, because you've got positive integer times 2 plus positive integer. Of course, that's going to be bigger than 2 times a posit that, that same positive integer minus, this is going to be smaller because you're taking away something from it. So the, the, for this to be true, this, 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 of course, has to be the 25, this has to be 1. I can't say or. 2p plus q equals 1 and 2p minus q equals 25 because p and q are both positive. That's the only way that can work. And similarly here, you've got 2p plus q equals 5 or 2p minus q equals 5. Okay, those are the only other way of getting 25 when you multiply two numbers together. And um, so therefore, we end up with, you know, both of those leading to p becoming non-integer. The only way that that is true is if p is 6.5. The only way that if that is true, that p is 2.5, which is a contradiction. It contradicts our statement that p is an element of the integers. So therefore, um, that proves that our statement that we assumed is false. So the 
what we originally were told to prove is is actually true. Okay, so excuse my handwriting here. So there are no positive integers, p and q, such that 4p squared minus q squared equals 25. I should try and get that a bit more better handwriting. But I hope that was clear. And that is how you deal with proof by contradiction. And that's an example of it. Um, so as I said, this is from a paper which is not the IAL papers. This is from the GCE papers in the UK. And I'm going to only take questions from here which relate to what I'm teaching in, in international A-level. And this is one of those topics which you don't find in the older papers because it's new both in, in the UK and in the IELTS, a new, new topic. So I'll take questions from, from these papers and those type of um, topics or certain questions which I think there's been a change of style and whatever. And you might, we might find some questions that might help from the, the papers from the UK. Okay, but I don't go through these papers in entirety because I stick to what I'm teaching in school and um, I only take what I need from these other papers. Um, but if I do do any other questions from this particular paper, you will find them in the playlist that should appear in this area here. Questions to do with P4 um, proofs, which is basically proof by contradiction, can be found in the playlist that should appear over here. You can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link. Thank you for watching and see you soon.